You asked for it, you got it. I have reviewed the brief submitted by the state of New York in the Anton Young versus Negrelli case before the United States Supreme Court as they are begging the Supreme Court to maintain the stay, which means the pause, entered by the New York Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit in New York City, which, if it remains, would prevent the lower court orders striking down the vast majority of New York's concealed carry laws from going into effect. Let's talk about this New York State brief when we get back and what it means for your rights. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and New York Times best-selling author. If you have not subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so. We're really working hard to try to get to 100,000 subscribers. We think it's going to make a big difference for the social media algorithms, and we appreciate your support. All right, folks, so I read the 45 pages or so submitted to the United States Supreme Court by the state of New York in the Anton Yunk versus Negrelli case. Now, I want to remind everybody that this is a different kind of case than Nyserpa versus Bruin, because Nyserpa versus Bruin was a case that was litigated to its conclusion in the federal district courts of New York, then it was litigated to its conclusion in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, fully adjudicated, and then it went to the U.S. Supreme Court on the merits after all of this stuff that had taken place. In contrast, and this is a very big deal, I think, potentially big deal, in contrast, the Antonyuk case was filed, I believe, in late August or September, and everything about it is still on what would be known as an interlocutory basis or a preliminary basis, meaning there is no final court judgment in the lower court. There's no final court judgment on appeal by the Second Court of Appeals. Uh, we are dealing with emergency applications up and down the line. We're dealing with preliminary injunctions. We're dealing with interlocutory preliminary stuff, which historically the U.S. Supreme Court doesn't like to get involved with because they rather have cases, as a general matter, that have been fully adjudicated, start to finish, womb to tomb, so they have the benefit of all that knowledge and all that debate and all that law and all that briefing and all this argument that they can then draw on to try to get to the right decision. So they don't like to rush things on what would be called an incomplete record as opposed to making a decision on the full-blown multi-year record because by looking at the full-blown record, the Supreme Court justices generally think that, that minimizes the risk of them making a mistake because when they make a mistake, it has a massive ripple effect across the country. So they're very careful about jumping into cases prematurely. And that has nothing to do with what they think of the merits of the case. It's really about the procedural posture. So with that background in mind, the difference between Nyserpa versus Bruin, which the Supreme Court dealt with after years of litigation in that case, and actually many other related cases all across America that they had the benefit to draw from and look at, the Antonyuk case is a relatively early stage case. It's like in its infancy in a way. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the case. It just means time-wise it's in, it's in its infancy. infancy. And that is exactly what New York is arguing, which is what I predicted they would be arguing on this channel to the U.S. Supreme Court just about a week or two ago. And what they're arguing is two critical things, and then we'll talk briefly about the merits. New York State is basically saying to the Supreme Court, look, and by the way, let me step back just to remind you what happened. New York State got its butt beat in that, got its butt kicked in front of two federal court judges in the state of New York after the state of New York enacted all this crazy gun control law dealing with concealed carry permits. Specifically, they made the licensing requirements extra stupid and extra broad and discretionary. Which is, like, which is unconstitutional after Nyserpa versus Broome was decided. And at the same time, they expanded the definition of sensitive places, which on this channel we predicted long before Broome was decided, that would be where the anti-gunners go. And that's where they went. They tried to define the entire state of New York as a sensitive place, which, as you know, is a euphemism for a government-mandated gun-free zone. So that's what New York did in July of 2022, less than one month after the Supreme Court decided I serve versus Bruin that says you have a right to carry a concealed weapon on your body loaded and ready to go in case of confrontation outside in public under the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms. 
So that's what New York did in July. Uh, a series of lawsuits got brought. The two major ones, or the series of them, got brought in the Northern District of New York in front of Judge Sotheby, who entered multiple decisions, long story short, entered a series of decisions saying that the vast majority of what's called the Concealed Carry Improvement Act uh, an absurd title, if you know what it really did. But basically, the vast majority of it, Judge Sotheby in the Northern District of New York said it was unconstitutional. And then shortly thereafter, Judge Sinatra in the Western District of New York in Buffalo issued a series of rulings that said similar things about much of the new law in New York, specifically as to places of worship and not being allowed to bring guns there. And then just recently, Judge Sinatra entered a similar order with places of worship that says also, you know, preventing pastors and ministers and priests and the like from being able to carry guns in their places of worship also violates the First Amendment's um, religious clauses in addition to the Second Amendment's right to keep arms. So that's where we stood. So what happened was New York State was very upset by this. They took an emergency appeal to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals based in New York City, and they said, please, please, please enter a stay that effectively will, will has the effect of and joining or stopping the decisions by Judge Sotheby and the decision of Judge Sinatra from going into effect. So even though Judge Sinatra and Judge Sotheby basically said that the vast majority of the laws associated with this new uh, th this new concealed carry laws for the state of New York is unconstitutional and may not be enforced, the state of New York appealed those decisions to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals and said, please stay it. The Court of Appeals in a couple of different decisions, both of which lasted were like three sentences long, in contrast to the hundreds of pages of the district court decisions, uh, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals in just a couple sentences said they're going to stay the decision, which means that the lower court decisions were not going to take effect, which meant that the Concealed Carry Improvement Act in all, in all of its glory, or I would say infamy really, uh, would be allowed to be enforced and people could be arrested for violating them because the Second Circuit Court of Appeals in New York City and joint or stayed, paused the lower the effect of the lower court decisions in our favor. So the plaintiffs in the Antonyuk case, but not in the cases in front of Judge Sinatra, by the way, just the lawyers uh, and the plaintiff in the Antonyuk versus Negrelli case, they took an emergency appeal from the Second Circuit stay decision to the United States Supreme Court. Now, there's some discussion here about, you know, Judge Sotomayor is the administrative stay judge or the emergency administrative judge for this overseeing the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. That's true. But once you get into these kind of unusual emergency stay things where the court is interested, and we know the U.S. Supreme Court is interested in this case because the Supreme Court entered an order directing the state of New York to file papers explaining themselves which we talked about last week. That is somewhat unusual because usually these emergency appeals just get like swatted away by the Supreme Court without it. You know, somebody asks for it and the Supreme Court just says, nah, we're not going to touch this with the 10 foot pole or it's premature or whatever. They don't, they don't get involved. But the fact that the Supreme Court in this case actually asked the state of New York to submit a brief is telling that the Supreme Court is paying attention to this. Now, as to whether or not it's going to be a decision by Judge Sotomayor or the whole court or how that may go down or there's things that go on in these kind of uh, uh, emergency contexts that we don't really know about because there's a lot of discussions that take place among the justices that, again, we're not privy to. So it's very difficult to know how um, or why these decisions may or may not get made and who will ultimately make them and how those will get occurred. But the bottom line is that what we, what you need to know is that the Supreme Court told New York to file a brief and they filed a 45 some odd page brief just now, which I've read, explaining why it was correct for the Second Circuit Court of Appeals to stay the lower court victories for the Second Amendment and, and they lay out a bunch of reasons. The two main reasons, which is we talked about before, that New York advances are procedural arguments. The first argument is to say what we talked about. I taught you that key word. Remember, you learn words on this channel, and that is the word interlocutory. Interlocutory means something that's not complete. Specifically, an interlocutory appeal, which is what we're talking about here, is an appeal from the lower court and the second circuit court appeals before the entire case is over. Like I told you earlier, usually the Supreme Court likes to hear cases and decide cases when they're completely done. So they've had years of litigation, years of appeals, years of arguments and briefs and, dis and trials, whatever, to, to get the maximum amount of information about the case and the controversy. And then the Supreme Court will look at it and say, what do we think? 
be, when you're dealing with an interlocutory appeal, which is what we're dealing with here, it's different because again, as I mentioned to you before, it's preliminary. It's kind of early. It's a little bit in its infancy of the case because keep in mind that the law has only been around since July. Here we are in January, yes, but but the litigation and Judge Sotheby and Judge Sinatra's decisions came out, as I recall, like in October or November. And, and so, so New York's saying, look, Judge, look, Supreme Court, it's just... This is an interlocutory appeal. It's just not what you usually do. Just don't do anything different than what you usually do. Just let the Second Circuit handle this. And then if you feel they've done something wrong down the road, then get involved. But it's premature for you, Supreme Court, to get involved on an interlocutory basis, which historically, by the way, would be a good argument to make and a very good chance that it could be a winning argument, which doesn't tell us anything about the, what the Supreme Court thinks of the merits of the case. It's just, again, on an interlocutory basis, the Supreme Court often doesn't like to get involved. And uh, that's just where New York put their first argument. The second argument was a similar argument, uh, basically saying, look, the best way to get the decision right on any legal issue, including the Second Amendment, New York argued, then no surprise with this is to say, look, Bruin is new. It just came out in June. There's a lot of litigation going on all across America. We don't think you, the Supreme Court, should get involved just yet. Let these cases percolate through the system. Let courts make decisions all across America. And only after, you know, it's been going on for six months or a year or two years, whatever, then maybe you can get involved in another Second Amendment case, Supreme Court. But right now, let these cases percolate and let lower courts, inferior courts under Article 3 of the, of, the, of the U.S. Constitution, let the inferior courts try to figure this, this out. Let the inferior courts uh, try to go back and forth and come up with decisions in different ways before you, the Supreme Court, way back in, way back into this. And that's the second main procedural argument that New York's making. Again, interlocutory, I mean, it's premature to get involved in the Supreme Court. On an interlocutory basis, you don't like to do it. And number two, don't do it just yet. Let these cases try to figure out what Bruin means over the next several months, maybe even the next couple years, because we just had the Bruin decision in June. Enough time hasn't come and gone for courts to make decisions robustly and to help you out. And you don't want to prematurely get involved Supreme Court because you'd rather let the inferior courts make the mistakes and then you get the benefit of their knowledge down the road. So those are the two main arguments that New York's making. Those are right down the middle arguments. Those are the arguments I would be making if I represented New York. And they're pretty good arguments in many respects uh, because historically those arguments are the sorts of things Things that would resonate as true with the Supreme Court, regardless of what they think of the Second Amendment merits of a particular case. So uh, just keep that in mind. Now, on the merits, New York makes the arguments that, you know, they basically, as, as you know, the way it worked, there's two main things that New York did with the Concealed Carry Improvement Act that they try to, you know, hurt gun owners. One is they tightened up the licensing requirements. Again, the licensing requirements, they went from saying that you need to demonstrate on a May issue permitting scheme, you need to demonstrate that you have a good enough reason for us to grant you the privilege of carrying a gun. Now they've morphed and now the Supreme Court said that's not allowed. So now what they're trying to do is that you have to demonstrate to us that you are a good enough person, right? That's when you see the words good moral character. That's what they're trying to say, that we had the discretion for many years to determine, do you have a good enough reason to carry a gun, a good enough reason to carry the gun? Now we want to have the discretion to determine whether or not you are a good enough person to be allowed to carry a gun. See the little sleight of hand from good enough reason to good enough person, and they try to say because the Supreme Court says that, you know, people uh, have to have good moral character, good moral conduct. They have to be law-abiding Americans to carry guns. New York is trying to take that to the next level and say that gives them the discretion. But that is clearly not accurate or correct because if you read the Bruin case, it's very clear, not just from the majority opinion, but from the concurrence of Justice Roberts and Justice Kavanaugh that specifically say that not only was the New York regime before Bruin unconstitutional because you have a right to carry guns, not a privilege to carry a gun in New York or anywhere across America. It's a right to carry gun, number one. And number two, discretion is not allowed. Criteria for whether or not you're allowed to carry a gun, if you have a shall issue carry regime, it has to be objective, no discretion. And New York, in this case, is clearly engaged in all sorts of discretionary behavior because that's why else do they want to see your social media accounts? Because someone wants to make a subjective judgment about, are you a good enough person? Why else do they want to interview you? Because they want to have a subjective determination. Are you a good enough person? Why do they want references? Again, they want to make sure that they can have a subjective 
determination that you're a good enough person. These, all of these things, as I see it, speak to subjective discretionary decision making by government officials about whether or not you can carry a gun, and that violates the language of NYSERPA versus Bruin. But that's where the fight is over the licensing restrictions, the licenses requirements that New York enacted in July of 2022 with the Concealed Carry Improvement Act, which of course is a joke to call it that, but nevertheless, that's what they call it. The second part is the so-called sensitive places arguments, which I flagged literally months and months and months before Bruin was decided. I said, this is where the anti-gunners will go. Uh, they're gonna try to label everything a sensitive place, which as you know, is a euphemism. It's a propaganda term for government mandated gun-free zones. Now the Supreme Court in NYSERPA versus Bruin indicated there's three historically pl historical places where you could ban guns, um, and those are polling places, courthouses, and legislative chambers. That's it. So now, and they also went on to specifically say that you can't declare all of the island of Manhattan a sensitive place. And just because there's police flowing around does not make it a sensitive place. You can't do it. So generally speaking, again, uh, sensitive places are not allowed. And again, the burden is on the government to justify historically going back to 1791 when the, when the Second Amendment was enacted and when it became affected. That's where you have to go back to. And there is no way on earth outside of those three areas that we just talked about, polling places, legislative chambers, and, uh, and, and courthouses, legislative chambers, and polling places, maybe schools with respect to the students based on the University of Virginia example with James Madison and Thomas Jefferson on the board of trustees there. But other than those three, 0.5 examples, and that, by the way, the UVA case only deals with students, not adults carrying guns, not non-students carrying guns. So other than those 3.5 places, I don't see how uh, New York or any state can justify a sensitive place under the text, history, and tradition standard of the United States Supreme Court's Bruin case. But again, that is where they're also fighting here. They're trying to say that they have all these bases for claiming all this stuff that's churches and whatnot are sensitive places. Um, I think that's a bunch of hooey. I don't think that will, will stand up to court scrutiny. But I, therefore, I think the best argument that New York is making is not any kind of a substantive argument. I don't think they have very good substantive arguments. It's really the procedural argument to just say, look, you know, Supreme Court, I know you're interested in the case, but it's just too soon. It's just too premature, uh, you know, to get involved with another Second Amendment case especially on an interlocutory basis because you don't want to get it wrong with having incomplete data, incomplete facts, incomplete information. And I think, you know, that's probably what the Supreme Court will be looking at very carefully. The procedural issues associated with this emergency appeal from the plaintiffs and Anton Young, as opposed to the substantive merits of the Second Amendment arguments is my best guess. But I will tell you this, that New York is running scared. And I'll tell you why New York is running scared. And it's buried in this page. It's buried, uh, it's buried at the bottom of their brief. But this tells you all you need to know that they're scared about getting their butts kicked by the U.S. Supreme Court. If you look at page 36 of the New York brief to the U.S. Supreme Court, here is what they write. Now, this tells you all you need to know that they're scared. This is what New York writes to the U.S. Supreme Court in Antonyuk versus Negrelli. Quote, if this court, which is the Supreme Court, if this court disagrees and determines to vacate the stay by the Second Circuit, it should do so only with respect to applicants, which would suffice to prevent any alleged injuries that applicants may have standing to assert. To assert. You hear what I just said? Let me read that again. Now, who are these applicants that they want to limit this to? Those are the very few people, those plaintiffs, Mr. Antonyuk, for example, the very few plaintiffs in the case. They do not want the stay to be lifted with respect to anybody else in the state of New York, just with the specific applicants. So why is New York saying, hey, worst case scenario, judge, you know, worst case scenario, U.S. Supreme Court, if you decide to spank us and tell the Second Circuit Court of Appeals to vacate their stay and let the lower court decisions go into effect, make sure it only goes into effect and gives those Second Amendment rights to those handful of peoples that applied and specifically who are the plaintiffs in those cases who have applied for relief to the U.S. Supreme Court. And I can tell you that if the U.S. Supreme Court was going to vacate that stay from the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, I could tell you that they will not be limiting uh, that decision to just those handful of people that actually went out and brought the suit. Uh, that would be allowed to apply to all New Yorkers. Okay, well, I hope you learned a little bit something here uh, about what's going on in the Antonyuk versus Negrelli case before the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, I do think this is a 
You know, this is a, a, a tough argument by the plaintiffs, uh, just procedurally, uh, not impossible, but it is a little bit of an unusual move here. Not a bad move, just a little bit unusual. So we'll see what the Supreme Court says. They're obviously interested in the case, so they wouldn't have asked for a briefing. So, you know, we'll keep you informed. Uh, but in the meantime, if you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner, please do so, and we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.